Last time we had uh, discussed the major experiences uh, that could uh, induce a sense of uh, avoidance, withdrawal or compromise uh, in the adult life of a person. Okay. Uh, we ended with the fact that uh, if you have certain degree of uh, predictable punishment in your life, then uh, it still uh, could be tolerable uh, for us as a recipient of those punishments. But more and more randomized is uh, the presentation of the punishment okay means the more and more unpredictable it is okay uh, it could be much more uh, anxiety arousing for us we now come to uh, the form of withdrawal that usually is designated as withdrawal symptom in psychology in clinical literature uh, we had already talked about uh, certain forms of uh, defenses being used uh, we talked about uh, the fact that it can be an uh, intelligent way of handling a situation. Okay. But we also uh, sometime back uh, know we did touch upon this issue that there could be a possibility uh, that there is a predominant uses of withdrawal as a uh, defense mechanism. Now, if uh, the combination of immaturity and helplessness provides a shield against failure to achieve somebody. Okay. Then one starts you know uh, exhibiting defense mechanism okay. such as uh, say uh, regression as a defense mechanism. The reason being uh, that you want to revert back to a less demanding state in the case of regression. Okay. You find the present uh, condition uh, to be extremely demanding something uh, uh, which puts uh, extraordinary pressure on you and you find your limitations in terms of handling it and therefore, you decide to revert back to a stage of life which according to you was far more pleasing simply because uh, there were not uh, those many demands uh, put forth. Uh, also, you were capable of managing those demands and therefore, one can show regression as a technique. Okay. Now, fantasy as a defense is normal but there could be a possibility of partial or complete withdrawal okay, where reality is substituted by imaginary scenarios. No? Now, what we I think uh, no study or day for uh, somebody came here after the lecture asking uh, that if you overuse fantasy okay, is it uh, a good way of handling the situation. Okay. So, now we are touching that issue that fantasy could be a normal type of a defense mechanism that people use, but there could be a possibility uh, where you partially or you completely withdraw your engagement from the environment okay, because you are able to create an imaginary scenario. Are you getting this point? No? So, <clears throat> it is not that you are present in the environment and a part of it you fulfill through imaginary achievements. So, Here, you might create you know an imaginary scenario itself where you are involved, and therefore you either go for a partial withdrawal or you go for a complete withdrawal. Okay. So, even if you go for a partial or a complete withdrawal, this could be a problem. Okay, and uh, another form of uh, you know uh, such type of abnormal withdrawal is. Uh, where you adjust by developing certain form of ailments okay uh, what is uh, no reported as psychosomatic disorders now the psychopathology literature is full of psychosomatic disorders where primarily the origin of the problem lies in uh, the psychology of uh, the human being and the symptom lies on the soma part the body part okay so, you have a bodily manifestation of the problem whereas, the cause of the problem lies in your psychological process. So, if you uh, know tend to develop a withdrawal symptom based on a certain type of elements that you develop okay, then once again it is classified as a set of psychological disorder classified as psychosomatic disorders okay. and withdrawal is 
also shown as neurotic reaction patterns and in certain cases you can have psychotic uh, patterns also. Neurotic and psychotic patterns we will uh, discuss some of them at length that would be our last module that would be uh, the last or uh, the last but one uh, week of the semester. Okay. Uh, but remember this that there could be a possibility where you have a, a fabricated scenario, you have an imaginary scenario which makes you partially withdraw or completely withdraw then it is no more fantasy. Fantasy is now triggering you to move towards withdrawal symptom. There could be a case where you tend to withdraw okay, and in order to defend yourself you develop certain symptoms which is again an indicator of a disorder called psychosomatic disorder and there could yet be a possibility where you have a certain type of a neurotic or a psychotic symptom which is combined with withdrawal tendency. Okay. All these types of withdrawal mechanisms are considered to be abnormal reactions. They are not going to help you in uh, striking balance in your life and therefore, they do not positively contribute to your <coughs> psychology of adjustment. Okay. So, that was all that we had to uh, discuss certain things we can take up you know, if it interests you like say issues uh, like compulsive type of engagement in a set of activity that does not allow you to engage yourself in other activities say compulsive gambling for example. Okay. Uh, compulsion to watch pornographic material for example, okay. compulsive gaming for example. Okay. You somewhere feel that <coughs> you enjoy the stuff, okay, the virtual stuff to the heightened extent okay, and you engage yourself so much so that your real life situations and real life demands you compromise with. Okay. There are a good deal of research on this, uh, on compulsive gambling, on uh, compulsion towards pornographic material. Uh, compulsive engagement in uh, gaming behavior and uh, why is it that people get engaged in such type of things and why is it that they have a tough time getting rid out of it. Okay. Uh, if you are interested later on I uh, will no, pass on some reading stuff to you uh, where you can have a look at it. So, this is all for today, uh, it is now open for discussion if you have anything to discuss anything to ask most welcome. We are reverting back to the previous module, is that so? Where we had the maintenance needs, no? This was the whole list of maintenance needs. You were saying that how do we interlink approval, value and meaning and hope to, to each other. Okay. See, uh, because we are living in a social structure, okay, we are supposed to comply to certain social needs. Okay. The society will demand us certain things from us and in turn we are supposed to fulfill them. Okay. Now, the way we interact with others in the society and overall the way we influence our society requires certain degree of approval. Okay. So, say for example, uh, take uh, the example of the performance of an instructor during a course in a semester. Okay. There could be a possibility that you do not approve of the content, you do not approve of the methodology adopted, you do not approve of uh, the uh, manner in which it was deliberated, you do not approve of the way the classroom interaction took place okay. and your entire approval disapproval okay, gets reflected when you get a chance to fill your student reaction survey. Okay. Now, that is an approval mechanism that has been designated, that has been designed okay, by a system okay, which tells you that whether certain form of behavior of an instructor, behavior in the sense that overall performance including behavior okay, uh, is does it have a overall uh, approval or not. Okay. In personal context also, okay, 
when you respond to an individual or when you respond to a given situation, okay, you do seek approval. The more and more positive feedback you get, the more you and more you are sure that your response is approved. Okay. So, it is basically a feedback mechanism that makes you realize that this form of behavior in this quantum, in this situation, in this format is perfectly acceptable. Okay. The more and more acceptable you are to others in your environment, the more and more adjusted you feel. Okay. The more and more happier you are, because the demands does not mismatch what you are delivering. If there is a lack of approval, this would mean that what the society expects from you and what you are delivering, there is not a perfect match between the two. And higher is the mismatch, more and more is the load on you to give the desired outcome. Okay. Similarly, the more and more you are able to uh, know, deliver things that is demanded by others, okay, the more and more value you find in the engagement that you are involved in. And the more and more you find that you are engaged in value oriented activities, you are able to identify some meaning in whatever you are doing. Okay. Uh, take certain examples like somebody who has designated value to certain form of engagement, which others do not take pride in. Uh, I would not name the shrine, but uh, there is a very popular shrine in our country, uh, where the son of the leader of that uh, shrine uh, went abroad, studied abroad, studied management there okay, and could have uh, you know, joined a job like any other uh, management graduate. Okay. But after certain time, after graduating, okay, he came back and joined his father as uh, say leader of the shrine. So, he was second in command and after his father, he is now the uh, leader of that shrine, okay, the major stakeholder of the shrine. Now, if I share this story with you, for certain reasons I am not naming the shrine, but it is a very popular shrine in our country. Now, if you interpret this type of uh, uh, say activity performed by an individual. One way of looking at it, I do not know the exact reason why he decided to do so, but just as an example we are discussing as an intellectual enterprise we are now looking for causes. One uh, logic you can give that what would uh, have been his salary if he would have joined uh, the best job okay. and how much does he earn now? Of course, there is no comparison, because what he earns through shrine is far more compared to what he would he would have earned as his salary, because the donation to shrines are very high. What would have been his social status as manager okay, and as leader of the shrine? Again there is no comparison, you enjoy far better you no know, social status as a leader of the shrine. Now, these are our ways of looking at things, no? the external viewpoint there could be the person specific viewpoint no? and the person says that you know uh, I was always interested in uh, engaging myself in activities which are directed towards others. Now, visiting a shrine, uh, no worshipping uh, there at that location and uh, no getting engaged in some type of uh, uh, spiritual religious activities uh, there okay, uh, give them a deep sense of solace for those who have you know, been suffering in life and I am instrumental in uh, running this mechanism. I find it more value oriented. This gives me my engagement in such type of uh, shrine based activity also gives me uh, meaning to my life. It is perfectly okay. Okay. The way the person looks at uh, know his engagement and is able to know find value in whatever he or she is doing and finds meaningful uh, engagement for himself or herself that helps you uh, retain your level of 
uh, engagement in the task concerned and it also makes you uh, very happy satisfied you derive a sense of achievement it finally contributes to your uh, sense of well being it contributes to your mental health That is true, that is true. Uh, let me give you some weird examples. Uh, this is an example from a textbook uh, in uh, Morgan King Scopler that very book on introduction to psychology. You find this example, uh, a guard who was put at the railway crossing in one of the small towns in uh, England okay, did his job meticulously throughout his life. Okay, his entire job was what you find here at the main gate of IIT Kanpur, where somebody is only designated the task that uh, if a train has to cross your uh, um, no, uh, manned crossing, then you just have to close the gate and then once the train crosses, okay, you have to open it. All you have to ensure is that there is uh, no accident at your site where you are posted. This man okay, was engaged in this activity for quite long. And he performed his job meticulously, never ever uh, an error took place at the place where he was deputed. Much later uh, at the uh, last phase of his career <coughs> in the railways, he was given a promotion. Okay, he was supposed to become a supervisor because he has you know, rendered a glorious service for certain uh, number of years and this man denied the promotion. When he was asked okay, why uh, you do not want to be promoted because usually people will always look for promotion and he said that if I become supervisor of uh, the manned railway crossings, my nature of job will be different. I would primarily be looking at others who would actually be performing the task. So, I am not performing the task myself, others would be performing the task and I would be evaluating them. Okay. So, instead of saving a forthcoming accident instead of saving property and human life, I would primarily be responsible for all those who commit error and because of their error okay, some uh, damage is caused to life and property. He said that I find the previous engagement more meaningful and I do not find the later offer that I have with me meaningful at all. <coughs> you have different ways you know, the people, how people uh, look at uh, what they do. There is a very popular uh, temple. Uh, on in the western India, uh, where you find uh, know people who would uh, uh, come there and offer food to rats. I do not know if you have visited that temple, it is a very popular temple there okay. and you find only rats and rats there okay. so, and uh, know in the form of uh, the prasad that is usually offered in Hindu temples, you find uh, eating stuffs for the rats being sold out of the temple. All you do is you buy it, you worship God and you offer uh, the prasad to the rats because it is full of rats. So, you find that the rats will start uh, you know, pouring in and they will eat the stuff okay. and you would also find interestingly something that might sound uh, not acceptable and uh, worth practicing to us is that you will find human beings. Okay. Also taking those prasads you know, as, as if this is a uh, blessed return from God. If I offer you something that mouse has eaten, I do not know how many of you would accept it. So, if your uh, hall, uh, your uh, miss manager tells you okay, that all the biscuits, all the laddus, all the <coughs> fruits that will be served in this canteen will be partly consumed by the rats. Okay, why? Because this is blessings of Lord Ganesha. How many of you would accept it? I doubt. Even I myself would not accept it. Okay. But there you have a, uh, know people in the temple who you know very religiously uh, they are involved into such things and you take pride in doing whatever you are doing. There are uh, beautiful documentaries you know, where you would find people who take pride in uh, you know, collecting food for uh, the monkeys in the urban area they will come they will distribute food they are very very friendly with the monkeys every day they do it okay without a gap i have myself seen uh, somebody who every day would you know take uh, flour in his uh, 
uh, and those uh, you know big big uh, bundles of it and will uh, make small pieces out of it go to the ganges offer it to the fishes and uh, he finds it very meaningful okay so these are basically you know uh, more of the things that satisfies you within if you try to link approval and value and meaning see approval is where I approve of a format of behavior and I also seek a positive feedback from others. This is how my behavior is approved. When I find something very meaningful, okay, then the external world still might not approve of it, but because I find it very convincing therefore, I go ahead with it. And because uh, no others are not able to see it the way I see it right now today. But tomorrow who knows others would start looking where the things I am looking at it. Okay. Major philanthropic uh, engagements of individuals say for example, Mother Teresa's uh, involvement in uh, philanthropic activities for example. Okay. Uh, she along with uh, another sister both of them they started a work okay. and it was only two who would find uh, meaningful engagement in whatever they were doing. Okay. And gradually, gradually, gradually people started pouring in and finally, you have the whole big organization spread throughout the world. Okay. There could be many such things, many such things where you find uh, that you are able to find uh, it valuable, you are able to uh, assign a meaning to that engagement, whereas others are not able to or vice versa, okay, where uh, no, uh, people endorse you that this is uh, no worth doing, why do not you do it, you are capable of doing it and you realize it and then you start moving ahead. The third possibility that you find something meaningful, valuable, you start doing it, others do not value it. <coughs> then comes a time when your activity is, no, is recognized by others and they also join you, it becomes a much bigger group, all such possibilities could be there. But then Finally, it adds you uh, maintain the fact that I am a human being who is involved in uh, value oriented activity, uh, you find your engagement extremely meaningful and therefore, you carry forward the thing that you are engaged in. This is how uh, no value and meaning will uh, help you. Finally, if you realize uh, that I uh, am you know, involved in something which has certain degree of value attached to it, when I realize that I am uh, find I am able to assign a meaning to whatever I am doing okay. and this also has certain degree of approval, okay. self approval and the approval of others, okay. I am pretty optimistic in my life. Okay. So, targets that I am not able to achieve or targets which might appear you know, far fetching and probably unachievable at this point of time, still I am hopeful that a day would come when such targets would be achieved. <coughs> If not me, somebody else will achieve, will achieve it, but then the movement must go ahead. Imagine a situation, the first person to decide that he will be the freedom fighter and would fight for the cause of the country. Which country? You can you know, choose different countries. Okay. That person would certainly not have been very sure if his attempt would be finally, uh, you know, liberating his country from the occupancy of the foreigners. Take our Indian context, uh, the first revolt, 1857 revolt. I am not sure if uh, the leaders at that time were very convinced that their effort will make the Britishers move out of the country. Okay, but that doesn't stop you from still doing something which you find value oriented, which you find very meaningful. Okay, and your hopes run very high even though the price that you pay for it could be very high. Say for example, 1857 those who took the lead in the revolt all of them were either killed during the war or they were later on hanged by the British forces. Okay. But did it not uh, the whole engagement, did it not uh, know, induce that high hopes in them? The hopes were high, the price was also high. Okay. But it is not that they would not have calculated the price if this entire enterprise fails, but still you are very hopeful, you are optimistic and you are doubly sure that if not me, if not today then somebody else and definitely tomorrow. 
and this is how you engage yourself in activities. Many many uh, people who have achieved certain targets in life, okay, uh, many there are hundreds and thousands of such examples where you would realize that people take a pledge which they I am sure they are very convinced that it cannot be achieved, but still you take the pledge and throughout your life you were engaged in that. Uh, uh, Dr. Christian Bernard for example, okay, his own younger brother had a hole in his heart, okay. uh, both of them both the siblings were uh, very young when his younger brother died. The death of the younger brother was a big shock to the family and uh, his father preserved the half eaten biscuit that was the last stuff that his son had taken before his death. Okay. Little later when uh, Christian Bernard grew up, his father uh, still was preserving that half eaten biscuit and he would he showed it to his son elder son Christian Bernard and said that you know. Uh, your brother had uh, a hole in his heart and uh, there was no mechanism in medical sciences available uh, to plug in those holes. It was a terrible death that your brother had and this is uh, you know, the last uh, you know, memory that we have related to your brother, half eaten biscuit, last food that he ate and he died. This was some type of an emotional engagement for the parents. You know? that you preserve the memory of your son okay, who died because of certain medical ailment. This became a great source of motivation for Dr. Christian Bernard who even later on got this biscuit preserved for himself. Okay. He would keep it on his work table and would derive inspiration out of it. He developed the whole mechanism of plugging in the holes in the heart and he took a pledge know that he will uh, plug all holes in all hearts of the world okay, wherever the patients are. Now this is an unachievable target practically if you look at it, but think of the hope of a man who you know uh, tirelessly works for years and years altogether, just you know trying to evolve a much better technique, trying to uh, know heal the wounds of uh, the small children who have who are born with uh, holes in their heart. Okay, and conducted you no know, n number of surgery that was possible for him. Okay, unachievable. What I'm trying to prove is you know, that you could take a pledge, you could get involved in something which you find very value oriented, very meaningful, and your hopes run very high. And you devote years and years, perhaps your entire life, for that cause. Okay, Christian Bernard, we have one example of it. Uh, I'm told that uh, when Lenin became uh, the head of his nation when uh, you, the then USSR came into being, he took a pledge that he will never take uh, milk till he is able to feed all Russian children with a glass of milk. Now you, if you take a pledge like that, perhaps you know that you would never ever be in a position to have a milk in your life now, because practically it is an unachievable task to ensure that all kids in your country gets minimum one glass of milk every day but you take the pledge and you fight for the cause. Okay. Um, I do not remember the name, but I had watched a film, it was basically of a doctor uh, who wanted to take care of the people who had uh, been the victims of uh, the Nagasaki and Hiroshima bomb blast, okay, the atomic explosion there. As a doctor, he must have been very sure that he is now exposing himself to radiation and he is going to die in the process. I am extremely convinced about that, very, very convinced simply because you are uh, you know a person who is, who knows about all these things, you are well informed, but still that man decided to go back to those affected areas in Japan and he died in that process. Okay, he himself uh, became a victim of it. Okay, lost his eyesight later on uh, died, uh, but then till he was alive and till he did not lose his eyesight, he kept on, kept on, kept on uh, you know continuously engaging himself with the victim of uh, the atomic uh, bomb blast. Okay. 
now you find something else meaningful. Okay, somebody takes pride in running away, securing life for himself and his family, somebody takes pride in get, getting engaged for the cause and your hopes run very high okay. and all it does is that finally, your engagement makes you realize that life is worth living, this act is worth doing, go ahead. Finally, this is uh, the you know, punch words that you recollect from these experiences and therefore, you are able to maintain your status as a productive human being who interacts with his environment, is in a very sane state of mind and is engaged in uh, productive activities. Any other question? Okay. <clears throat> what purpose maintenance needs serves? See, basically, uh, I am an individual, okay, who is uh, you know, performing certain type of activities. I am in a particular state of mind. Okay, I am of a given personality type. I am of a given temperament. I have my own feelings, I have my own motivation, this is how I would define an individual. What maintenance they needs do is that it provides you the basic skeleton that would not allow you collapse. Okay. If I can draw a parallel, it is like say you design a human body and take out the skeleton out of it. Now, if you remove the bony structures of the human body then you cannot stand erect, your entire rest of all your systems could be very intact, but still your body would collapse on the ground simply because you do not have the basic framework to help you stand erect. Okay. This only comes when you have a proper skeletal system which supports you. Maintenance need actually provides that skeleton to you, where there are certain things which you take as uh, no uh, denominators to analyze your engagement in the world. You try to analyze yourself how good you are in terms of delivering what the environment is uh, demanding from you. You are able to evaluate whether your engagement satisfies you or not. So, finally, all these needs put together no 10 12 needs that you see here, they primarily help you to retain yourself as a human being who is engaged in worldly engagement and finds his engagement to be uh, fruitful, okay. is capable because of such engagements he or she is capable of uh, know maintaining uh, the level of adjustment that he or she is supposed to and is able because uh, adjustment by nature is supposed to be dynamic in nature. No? So, every moment you have to adjust according to one thing or the other, these maintenance needs okay, are those pillars which supports you okay, maintain that level of your adjustment, it does not allow you to sink and even if you sink in certain situations, it is a momentary type of a process and you regain your strength and uh, no. so that type of uh, stability that you attain as a human being, maintenance needs they provide a skeleton to this. Yes, any other question? Okay. <coughs> See, adequate frame of reference basically means that when you have to analyze yourself and when you have to analyze others in the world, okay, you would search for some denominators. No? say achievement, say if I have to compute what was the percentage of your score in your first quiz. Okay. All I would do is that what was the denominator, how much did you achieve okay. and I use a mathematical formula to say that you have secured say 68 percent marks. Okay. If I have to evaluate how did I perform in my uh, life or how, how am I performing in my life, how are others performing in their life, okay. uh, how am I performing with respect to others. I need to have a denominator for that, how would I derive the denominator. Okay. So, frame of reference 
would basically you know provide you that denominator that will help you understand okay uh, that you are able to finally evaluate a person an action a group the dynamics a process whatsoever it is with respect to the boundaries that you have sketched so it's equivalent to if you remember uh, the earlier example that we had taken was uh, that it's more like a picture that you take and you try to fit it into the frame that you are holding so you have a photo frame you have a picture and all you do is that you try to put that picture in that photo frame frame of reference what it would do okay that it gives you certain assumptions okay in a situation which is driven by all types of combinations you have certain reality assumptions okay for example uh, the example that we had taken earlier was that say the first day when you come to the lecture hall okay and you see the instructor for a designated course before that you have never seen the instructor you had put your request to ors there was a you know a computer based program which finally allocated you a hss selective but then you have certain reality assumptions your assumption would be that my instructor will certainly be above this age you cannot think of a 13 year old instructor of 7 year old instructor why because there are certain uh, reality based uh, no or reality driven assumptions that you know that these many years are needed okay this much uh, of certain degree of achievement is needed in the area of academics then only you qualify to enter into the profession so therefore your reality assumptions allow you to cut certain uh, things which will you will not be considered by you okay, in terms of evaluating the individual okay there could be some possibility assumption the instructor could be fat the instructor could could be thin the instructor could be tall could be uh, shorter in height could have gray hairs could have black hairs could have specs could, could have could not have specs these are all you no know, possibility assumptions there could be possibility of this and if not this maybe this or maybe this also that is the possibility assumptions and then you have certain value based assumptions i think he should certainly be able to teach psychology he should certainly be able to talk in english he should certainly be able to uh, deliver content on the given topic that is taken for a particular day okay these are your value assumptions if you fall short of this you cannot be a good instructor or you do not qualify to be an instructor at all okay now such type of assumptions that you have for yourself or you have for others okay those are the defining frames those are uh, the your denominators and when you evaluate yourself when you evaluate others in your environment you take those denominators into account okay this is how uh, no you define the frame of, uh, of reference how adequate it is in terms of uh, defining you is something very important if i have a flexible frame where something that i did not assume of comes in front of me do i still accept it okay uh, you remember in the initial phase we had taken an example of kids with multiple limbs okay say for example uh, you have booked the ticket during your for your mid semester recess you have booked your ticket from kanpur to uh, your hometown and when you board the train you realize that there is a child with a parent uh, no next to your birth with multiple limbs you accept it what is your <coughs> acceptance level to that you find uh, no um, a student in your class uh, who has certain degree of uh, handicap he is physically uh, no uh, he has certain type of a handicap do you still accept him or her okay uh, so your frame of reference how flexible it is in terms of accommodating real life experiences which you did not assume real life experiences 
that you had not thought of and hence you find that it is hard for you to fix it into your frame of reference how flexible you are in terms of doing that okay is going to influence uh, your overall healthy development as a human being okay the more harder the more brittle the frame of reference you carry the more difficult it is for you okay to accept others and the more difficulty you have in terms of accepting others the more difficult situation you are inviting for yourself okay and you will have to pay a price for in terms of uh, your adjustment because you have much much lower degree of uh, tolerance in uh, uh, in a situation where things doesn't fit into your way okay and life is never where you can always have things your way okay so how flexible you are in terms of accepting them okay that is an indicator of your frame of reference and that is the importance of frame of reference when it comes to psychology of adjustment